Welcome back to the show. The BNFT this morning says that the value of media entertainment industry to hit one billion US dollars. Uh, that's some analysis done by Price uh, House Water Coopers. And then the Ghanaian Times says fertilizer for farmers and the planting for food and jobs, 50,000 bags smuggled out last year to neighboring countries. Um, the upgraded Ghana City notes. Uh, are here on the front page of the Ghanaian uh, Times. The Asante Hinnis Forum uh, is there, captured by the Times. Asante Hinnis rallies international support for Ghana beyond aid. The finder says that the AGM Eka Energy Deal ratified, paid interest reduced, free interest increased. That's a big one. We we'll certainly will take a look at that. If we take to the daily graphic, a uh, photograph of Meridian Hotel. Uh, criminals take over that hotel, facilitating a death trap. That's how uh, the Daily Graphic put it. And uh, GHS, that is the Ghana Health Service, not implementing malaria vaccine trial. And turn attention to Ghana's interior, as Santahini tells investors. Imani retract injurious statement against KK Sapon fuel trade, fallout from the uh, now ratified. Uh, AGM Acre Day. We'll take a look at those stories. And um, uh, Greco is uh, assuring that uh, there will be no power outages. We are addressing challenges. Greco assures Ghanaians. Uh, we'll take a look at those stories once my guests are comfortably seated. And to do the talking this morning, uh, a Deputy uh, Minister of Information, a member of the NPP, uh, obvious, and uh, Pius Enam Hajide is here. Good morning. Great. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. We did. We okay. did. Were well, you commanded to support your Santini? Unfortunately, you I couldn't was make not it. Able to. Grateful for your time. Member of Parliament for the uh, Bursa uh, South uh, constituency, a member of the NDC, Honorable uh, Clement, Dr. Clement Park, is here. Good morning. Saluwa. Saluna. Kubasa. <laughs> and you respond, Kubasa. Kubasa. Very well. Good morning, Brad. I hope you are fine too. It's always a pleasure to be you here. You couldn't join us and to him too. Uh, I, I really wish I could, but uh, it wasn't possible. I know many other Ghanaians who were there to, we're there. to represent all of us in uh, urging him on to continue the good works that he has been uh, doing on our behalf. Okay, we're grateful for your time this morning. Certainly, let's start from your house, Parliament. And uh, the finder says that the deal has been ratified. Uh, the story uh, says that uh, Parliament has approved the amended deal with AGM Petroleum for oil exploration, the deep southwest tunnel oil block. The critical decision to accept the recommendations of Parliament's Mines and Energy Committee was made through a voice vote supervised by the Speaker, Professor Aaron Michael Quay, uh, amidst the position from the NDC minority. Even the Committee of Mines and Energy was divided when it sat in chambers to consider the contract. This was evident in the recommendations rep report it presented to the August House. It admitted that its conclusions were, were not unanimous, but a majority decision. And so uh, that's the story. If you take a look at graphic, uh, daily graphic, page 20, Imani uh, has retracted some, uh, what the paper says, injurious statements against KK Sapon and fuel trade. It is based on this same story. Uh, policy think tank Imani Gan has apologized unreservedly to the chief executive of the GNPC and fuel trade and, and for injurious statement made against them on April 25. Uh, the uh, apology was captured in a three-paragraph press statement titled Retraction and Apology to KK, Dr. KK Sapo and Fuel Trade. And uh, Daily Graphic says they have a copy of that apology. Let's start from this one. Uh, Pao, so uh, the issue was on uh, the press conference by Manny resulted in the back and forth the accusations and counter accusations. Eventually, Parliament has ratified the deal. Uh, Imani uh, has apologized to uh, people they felt they had uh, injured in a way. Now, what can we take from this? The bruha about the whole uh, uh, process. Well, uh, thank you very much, Bright. Yeah. Good morning to you, my uh, colleague here, to the cherished viewers of. Uh, TV3. 
and I also would like to seize this opportunity to uh, continue to congratulate the good people of this country for keeping faith uh, with their government mm. uh, without a doubt uh, we are on track with the restoration agenda and it is important that we carry the people with us uh, on uh, this matter of an apology from Imani I think that I would say that the honorable thing to do in any such instance would be to offer an unqualified apology and uh, you recall that Dr. Keke Sapon immediately after the Imani Forum had caused to issue a, a statement and to caution that he was going to go to court if Imani did not uh, retract and apologize. Now they have retracted and apologized. I mean, some of us would want to uh, intervene uh, on their behalf and appeal to Dr. K.K. Sapon uh, to let this one pass. Even though it is becoming increasingly worrisome that we malign and uh, chip at the integrity of people on very huge platforms, a huge platform like the forum that uh, Imani uh, got, they organized a major press conference chaired by Professor Akilak Basoya. I mean, was aired on major networks across this country and caused grievous harm to the integrity of somebody, only to go back a few days later to scribble a few pages of apology that without doubt does not get the kind uh, of media leverage that the earlier character assassination got is problematic for those of us in public space yes we have responded to the call to save the people of Ghana hmm. but that does not mean uh, that uh, we do not deserve to be treated properly and fairly. My colleague here is also in the public space. It would be unfair and incorrect to try to abuse the fact that he has offered himself into public service. Uh, we deliberately uh, pedal falsehood about him, only with a view to apologizing later. When it's happened already, it would be my intervention on their behalf that we let go. They got it entirely wrong when they said that uh, Dr. K.K. Sapon and his family uh, were involved in the ownership of world trade. This is a basic uh, 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 matter which I believe Imani uh, had the capacity to have found out. I mean, if mm -hmm. we wanted to find out the ownership of companies, it's not rocket science. The Registrar General's Department is just a stone throw away. It's not rocket science. And they have, the money has, has a record of, of doing this before in times past. They have been able to check uh, ownership and uh, even shareholder, shareholder structure of companies. How come something they did in the past, they forgot or failed to do in this instance, is mind boggling. Uh, but that's not the only thing they got wrong. In that earlier Imani engagement, they got a lot of things wrong. They, for instance, said that Ghana was losing, uh, was going to lose some $30 billion. Mm. I mean, it's magic calculation they did. All they did was to take the current rate uh, and the foil price and multiply by the total uh, uh, petroleum deposit institute. I mean, it's, it, is, it is a very fundamental error in calculating in the industry because we know about a recovery rate in the industry and it cannot be that when a certain quantity of oil is estimated to lie under the ground then you calculate all of that as revenue because not all of that actually mm -hmm. comes up and that is why there's a recovery rate and any uh, level 100 economic student or this is not economics mathematics students who understands that there is a recovery rate will do the multiplication 
and they they are very alarmist because if they mention 30 billion the people of ghana were going to be incited that, that we are losing that much without bearing in mind that Ake has brought in technology that Hess did not even have. Hess, I'm rather sold off to Ake. And uh, technology that Hess did not have, which would even enable a, 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 a higher extent of exploration. Currently, the, rec the, the recovery rate is at 25. Mm -hmm. We are hoping 25%. We are hoping that with the kind of technology that Ake is bringing on board, we can move recovery rate to between 35, 40% thereabout. And that is another thing they got wrong. Another issue they got wrong, and which for me formed the very basis for their press conference, was that there was a need, the minister was uh, involved in a new petroleum agreement. It was not new? I mean, the minister does not have that power. A petroleum agreement is the sole reserve of parliament. And only parliament can do a new petroleum agreement. A plan of development, POD, is in the minister's discretion to, to act upon. And the POD is not a new petroleum agreement. And they also again argued that, oh, because uh, 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 ECA uh, published or uh, published a POD, and so ECA was determining what must happen. No, it is not a, a determination. It is what the law says, that the contractor was going to propose a POD. And that 30 days after the minister receives the POD, the minister must communicate consent or otherwise. And the failure to communicate uh, 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 that we were not happy or we were not going to use that POD meant that the POD could have been used. They argued that the minister didn't do that without cross-checking, only to know later or to be told that the minister had actually gone through the processes of responding to Ake's POD, and indeed did write back to Ake, and mm. indicated to Ake that we were not going to accept the POD in that current uh, nature. It was, not gave, the, it was not the back of the money uh, allegation. No, okay. the, the letter had gone way ahead. In fact, if a man had just checked, the law says that when the minister receives a POD from a contractor, the minister forwards the POD to the Petroleum Commission. And so the minister indeed did send uh, the, the, the POD to the Petroleum Commission. And that alone means that the minister was taking action in conformity with the law. And the minister received advice from the Petroleum Commission, agreed with the advice, and forwarded the letter to Ake, telling them that we were not going to accept the, P, the POD in that nature, and gave them 45 days to come back with a new POD. But Imani claims that uh, the, mean, the minister was derelict in his duty, and that uh, uh, it means that uh, uh, Ake was going to go ahead and implement the POD in the manner in which it was. Plus several others, for instance, that there was no dynamic or pressure communication between appraisal wells that were drilled uh, by, 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 uh, by uh, Ake. Those appraisal wells were inherited programs. It was a program that has had before has sold off. And you recall the ITLOS ruling that uh, 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 Sea, sea boundary dispute we had with uh, La Côte d'Ivoire, and we had to take it for international arbitration, affected Hesse's program to a certain extent. So when uh, Ake inherited Hess, Ake asked for an extension of time to do appraisals. And appraisals can be done with the minister's permission even after the, the seven-year period that the law uh, allows, because it was inherited. So, so perhaps, well. be, be, because of time, is it your suggestion that uh, 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 Imani did not in any way contribute to any review of this process that has been beneficial to Ghana at all? Well, I cannot, I, I would not want to make that uh, kind of conclusive statement. Mm. I mean, we must encourage uh, participation, and we must encourage civil society participation, ordinary civil uh, citizen participation, and it may contribute. So I will not say that it did not contribute. I am worried about the fact that uh, increasingly a, a major uh, civil society organization such as Imani would fail to do some of the basic checks that uh, are so, fundamental. So you you, you, won't, to, you to, consider to, this to, as some isolated case? 
Well, I, 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 I don't know because in any case, because you said in increasing the, the yeah, but it's, I mean, it's, uh, no, it's, I mean, there's another one uh, that they have just published, uh, and I've, I was reading it uh, through it la last night, and I, I, and I noticed even without being uh, an energy expert or an industry uh, practitioner, there were some obvious uh, limitations on the part of the publication. Would you, uh, would, uh, from would, would you also say that, for instance, the Mines Energy Committee that sat on the case itself was divided. So does it not suggest that perhaps uh, Imani has contributed to perhaps bringing out things that we need to know? No, I mean, as for committee levels, the divisions at the committee level is not new. I, I, they are, on most of these, on most occasions, uh, people get into Parliament with different motivations, into these committee meetings with different motivations. Mm. And that's why we have encouraged that. Let us uh, act as Ghanaians first, and not members of, for instance, the MPP or members of the NDC. In the case of, and if I can jump and go to AGM, one of uh, for quickly the, so that for the, the uh, uh, minority, the 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 Select Committee mm. on Energy. The minority took a position uh, that surprised many about Medsongai. Uh, which is owned by uh, a Ghanaian. And if I go to the history of Metsonga and their uh, connection to the AGM, how a former member of the GMPC board, Mr. Chuchurupoku, uh, who was on the GMPC board, who was in fact chairman of the GMPC Exploco, was also a director uh, on Metsonga and was actually one of the witnesses for AGM. It's confusing, but at the end of the day, the, the and Chuchu Poku is a is a towering figure of the NDC. He was in the on the NDC board. Again, uh, GMPC Exploco even had the opportunity to buy a ten percent shares uh, in 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 Hess at the time. Ma budgetary allocation was made, uh, but maybe my senior colleague is here. He will explain to us why okay. in 2015 and in 2016 mm. budgetary allocation was made for Ghana to acquire a 10% interest in in the oil block, but they failed to utilize that, even though the money was somewhat okay. utilized. I okay. mean, you can get explanation. Right. I, I'm so, grateful. So, so the well. fact that there was division mm. uh, on the subcommittee uh, really doesn't mean much. What were they divided on is maybe what we need to interrogate. Okay. Right. Grateful. Very Doc. well. Thanks for having me, mm. as always, and uh, to say good morning to viewers. Mm. I know the people of uh, Fumbisi and Busa South uh, are watching, and they are still expecting you. It will be very, very soon. Well, first of all, I think it is important that uh, I acknowledge that today is the first day of Ramadan. So it is only fair and proper mm. that uh, we reach out uh, to our Muslim brothers and sisters as uh, they begin the process today, as uh, required by the tenets of uh, their religion. Uh, quite clearly, we all understand the benefits of uh, trying to uh, commune with God and get much more closer. If there was ever a time that we needed the Supreme Being's intervention in the affairs of our nation, uh, so I said today is the beginning of Ramadan. Mm. Uh, we wish them well, and uh, the rest of us who are not Muslims, uh, will do our best to ensure that uh, they are able to undertake their religious obligation. Uh, in ways that uh, uh, would endure to our collective uh, benefit. Uh, it is also proper that uh, I also acknowledge journalists uh, across the country, across the world, uh, in the wake of the celebration of the Press Freedom Day. And, uh, it is my hope that we'll get to touch base on that because there are some very worrisome developments in as far as that terrain uh, is concerned. But they must be commended and encouraged to soldier on in spite of what is clearly uh, a very reactionary approach by the current government and uh, Issa Parachiks. Uh, and indeed, we all know that now journalists are going into hiding. Uh, some are being flown out of the country um, under the auspices of uh, somebody that uh, is credited for repealing the criminal libel law. I think it's a very important subject that uh, must be looked at. Now to the, the issue at hand. Uh, look, let's face it. I am no spokesperson for Imani. Mm. And it is not my responsibility to try and intercede or intervene on their behalf. Uh, we all know the history of uh, this 
uh, think tank, civil society organization, and the contributions it has played uh, over the years. Uh, like them or hate them, they have come to stay, they do their work, they present their findings uh, in a very forceful way because they, they truly believe that the work they do is credible. And I'm actually surprised that for a government that in opposition uh, seemed to have enjoyed greatly from uh, work done by Imani, <laughs> today it seems as though the MPP in power uh, is querying Imani, and not only Imani, but many other organizations and institutions uh, that hitherto many thought uh, were cozy with uh, the then uh, opposition. Uh, perhaps it's just another sign of the intolerance and the fact that, you know, once you are in the kitchen and you begin to know the, 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 the levels of the temperature, uh, it has implications for the way you, you react. But you see, we cannot discuss this issue uh, regarding what we believe as a minority to be a ripoff uh, without giving the, the, the proper context. And that is why you read the story to do with the disagreement at the committee level. And indeed, that was also reflected on the floor. Uh, in many ways, it is unfortunate that our system uh, of governance and particularly our practices in parliament, unlike some other democracies, do not give us the chance to vote and be recorded for votes taken. So that even where you are opposed to a particular bill uh, becoming law, by virtue of being in the minority, which presupposes that you don't have sufficient numbers, when it is passed, the rendition or the narrative is that parliament has passed, it, has passed when indeed you have not been agreeable to what happened. And that is exactly the position of the minority because uh, indeed, <laughs> our position was made clear even before uh, we, we took that vote. And, and our argument is very clear and straightforward. Now, now, the request that was brought to Parliament to renegotiate this agreement uh, was not new and as far as our knowledge is concerned. This is a request that was made when uh, the former Minister for uh, Energy was still in office, uh, Mr. Yahoo. And so, he didn't see it fit or acceptable. And so if he did not see it fit and acceptable, probably likely because he didn't think that it was going to inure to the benefit of the good people of this country, and therefore was not willing to go along. And then there is a change uh, within the context of the claim that the former minister misled the president on another matter to do with uh, the Ameri deal. What has changed to the extent that with the coming into office of a new minister, suddenly room has been made for a renegotiated agreement? And but it is very simple and straightforward. We know what was in existence before uh, what happened on, on Friday. Mm. And it is very clear that we are losing or we have lost because now it has been passed. Except, of course, if, when there is a change of government, which we know is going to happen, we can really look at some of these things. But the fact is that we have lost 58% of, of our, our ownership. Our stake in it. And as far as this is concerned. Now, you must also remember that GNPC has invested colossally into what we are talking about, in excess of $30 million. And so when we had an arrangement that gave us Ghanaians, say 10% royalty, GNPC interest at 10%, GNPC additional interest at 15%, and what have you. And yet you now have a renegotiated arrangement that gives royalties, maintaining royalties at 10%, GNPC uh, carried interest at 15%, and indeed additional GNPC interest now reduces to 3%. And we are now even also giving reliefs at a time when we don't even fully understand the owners of the subordinate company known as Quad, then it raises a lot of serious and fundamental challenges. Who are we doing this to benefit? And so when you tell me that we are doing this because, you know, Aka Energy is bringing technology, let me ask you one simple question. And the reason is because the technology is going to come and enhance 
you know, the recovery, the recovery rate. rate, and that it is not proper for us, or in this case, uh, uh, Imani, mm. to try and, 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 and calculate on the basis of what he described what as on, pedestrian, on pedestrian basis to calculate and come up with an analysis of what we are going to lose. When indeed this same government saw it fit to mortgage bauxite that we own that they don't know the value to the Chinese. <laughs> I mean, how do you reconcile the two? You have a problem with a think tank civil society organization which has a track record of analyzing and presenting issues that we can debate and accept or reject in the national interest, doing their analysis based on what they deem to be a solid indices to come out with the potential loss, and yet it is okay for you to mortgage another resource whose value we don't know to the Chinese to get $2 billion. I mean, look, let's face realities. Let's face realities. We truly believe that this agreement is a ripoff. And we are yet to verify and get to the bottom of what is going on, because this is simply not right. The fact that the former minister for energy rejected this, and now the current minister for energy and government have pushed it, and this have raises questions. And this argument about Imani's personal banter with uh, Dr. KK Sapong, well and good, they have apologized. Let's move on. But that should not be used to mean that there couldn't be interest groups benefiting from this renegotiated agreement. I mean, you don't have to. We all know the way the systems work. People get people to fund for them. It, and so, is this something that can be proven? Well, we can prove it, but that doesn't mean that it cannot exist, or that doesn't mean that it has not happened. You and I know, and he knows it. I do. You do. I do you sir. may try not to admit it today because you are on the other side of the aisle. But I don't, honestly. I don't. You, you do know. That it is entirely possible. Yes. That possibility is. Personalities, probably even within the establishment, within government, could right. be beneficiaries of this renegotiated agreement. And that is why this is only the beginning, I can guarantee you, that this matter, in as much as they use their numbers to get it passed through a voice vote, mm. is not going to be allowed to pass just like that. We are going to continue the advocacy, we will continue digging. And we would continue to encourage civil society, the Imanis and what have you, to continue the work. Because the resources that belong to the good people of this country must be used to endure or to improve their conditions. And if indeed a previous government saw it fit to negotiate an agreement that was going to give the overwhelming stake to the good people of this country, whether for a succeeding government to come and revise it under a new minister who took over from a previous minister who refused to do it, that in itself should raise the red flags. And so where we stand, we continue to stand there. But make no mistake, the plethora of underhanded dealings that we are seeing cannot be allowed to pass without comment. And as we have said and continue to say again, 2020, the good people of Ghana would make a decision. We would have the opportunity to review all of the revisions and renegotiated contracts that we are currently witnessing under this government. Okay, grateful. Right. 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 You, you just, a, a just a few, okay. a few uh, words. A few. Uh, okay, a few. Uh, and I think that the, the, the journalists of this country do recognize. And on 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 uh, World Press Freedom Day, mm. uh, I represented the minister to again reiterate our commitment and the practical things that we are doing uh, to enhance their capacity and also to ensure their safety. We have announced that there is a media capacity enhancement program that this government is unrolling. And uh, this is a, a departure from what happened in the past. And you know, uh, when allegations of laptops and money is being shared uh, over, the, over the tabletop uh, by former operatives of the former government at the Ministry of Information, that is not the kind of capacity enhancement that we are talking about. And uh, we are in stages of uh, 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 the plan and the program to implement that. Again, we government is also 
uh, taking leadership in establishing a national coordinating mechanism on the safety of journalists. Without a doubt, there have been some unfortunate uh, incidences relative to a journalist. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that we have come a long way from uh, state-sponsored attacks on journalists under my honorable colleague's uh, dispensation when the NDC was in power. We, have, we had instances in this country where a minister of state encourages people to shit bomb a radio station and called it the citizens' uh, rejoinder. I mean, the state-sponsored. We have moved away from that. It's not happening and, now. And, and I'm saying, no, not a, I'm saying to you that there's a difference, and I've, we have com condemned and complained about some incidences of attacks relative to journalists. And the state has been acting to punish uh, those perpetrators and to bring them to book. But when you have Who a state... Who are the state punished? Well, uh, with respect to... The, the, the cases you're talking about. No, but we are, they are under investigation when, when okay. people are arrested. That's asking the whole yes. has the state I'm that people are, are being investigated and people, some uh, of the matters are being handled at the NMC and so on and so forth. I know mm. that in the case of a journalist that was attacked by the police, the police administration uh, has agreed to compensate the, the victim. I mean, and this is a movement forward from when the state used to regard those things as a, a citizen rejoinder. Mm. And, and so the people of Ghana do recognize that we are moving forward uh, in that regard. I'm confused and surprised that today uh, my colleague is saying that what a former minister may have done may have been sacrosanct. This same former minister brought something I said to he parliament. failed to do it. He yeah. refused okay. so, to do it. So, so it, does not, it does not suggest Pilots, that what he did Quote me properly. Okay. I'm saying, I, I said he refused uh, to uh, do uh, it. Uh, That's what I said. He said that he refused to do it. But I'm so saying that it's wondering surprising. why this minister is it doing it. It is surprising that we, we are seeking to suggest today that former ministers, their actions and their comments can be sacrosanct. That same former minister mm. that we make reference to took something to parliament that the NDC members of parliament found uh, uh, major issues with. If he could get it wrong at that time, how, how is it that we argue that, well, then he got it wrong? I'm not suggesting that uh, anything or everything that somebody does uh, can be right or can be wrong. But this attitude of picking and choosing conveniently to want to push uh, an idea as though, well, okay, uh, somebody uh, has the interest of this country. When you rejected, for instance, uh, his uh, Ameri deal uh, agreement, were you not minded that he is somebody who fairly takes decisions and who acts in the best interest of this country? And for that matter, why then did you uh, rise against As you're the, suggesting the, the, didn't the, didn't the presidency the, uh, agree uh, with that? So, which means that, that which means that, which means that, which means that was wrong in refusing. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that that blanket statement. We have to interrogate the particular reasons okay. why somebody may have rejected something at the time and somebody may accept it going forward. But okay. you make the blanket statement that um, a minister rejected it, and so why is a new, a new minister uh, 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 accepting it? And I ask you, you rejected something from a new minister and accepted something from, from the old minister and accepted something from the new minister. The, the, the Ameri deal, for instance, when Honorable Wache uh, uh, Jaku uh, uh, made his proposals, you stood up against it, and, 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 and seriously, seriously so. So you cannot make that categorical statement as a blanket. Okay. Again, we had to differentiate the Ake and the AGM. I think that at a certain point we confused the two. This thing about uh, uh, the percentages that my colleague read, these oil blocks were awarded by the NDC how many years ago? We are, are we able to drill even a pint of oil? No. Honorable, 100% of zero is zero. Sometimes it is overly simplistic to just look at the percentages. You give these oil deals at a certain percent, but you are not able to drill well. A good and responsible administration will interrogate why you are not able to drill well and negotiate terms that are able to get Ghana to drill those oils and get a, a value for money for it, get the benefits from, from it. You just sign the agreements and they lie there on the books. You say that you have invested $30 million as the MPC. Since you have invested that money, the money has not given any dividends because we are not, we are not drilling the oil. And so we have had to go and look for uh, some more, uh, 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 if you may, uh, uh, 
capable companies to come into the industry and give them the terms that are mutually beneficial to Ghana and to those contractors so that they can actually mine the oil so that the people of Ghana can benefit from it. And that's why how many uh, oil contracts did the NDC award? 13 or thereabout. How many, uh, 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 how many of those uh, wells have been drilled? Not one. Okay. Because you didn't look at your figures properly. You just went and, and, and did, for want of a better expression, some... some uh, uh, Really, really, let me, let me. Let me <laughs> okay, let me, let me, let me. <laughs> I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for you stopping. So, so, we are, so are we moving to a yes, different topic? You touched on well. that, that issue quickly. Let's uh, deal with the five minutes and then we'll go on. Uh, generally celebrated over the weekend and the call for more uh, commitment from government. He said government is uh, putting in measures, but are these measures really paying off? Uh, looking at what journalists are going through at the moment. Look, right, let's be honest and straightforward. And I understand my brother. I mean, you know he's a uh, deputy minister for information. information. right. By and large, he's the deputy chief propagandist for the, the party. So he would have to do his best to try and let it look good. <laughs> if not, he'll be called to the big house. Yeah, I've worked there before. I know the way the system functions. So I understand him. But look, let's be, let's be honest. And, and face facts. We can say that we have achieved 100% in as far as our nation is concerned with regards to the uh, freedoms that uh, journalists are expected to, to have, to be able to prosecute or to contribute their quota to the well-being of our nation. We all know the role that the media plays. Mm. And therefore, in a democracy like ours, at every point in time, we must always make a conscious effort to try and increase the space and to try and guarantee their freedom and to try and reward them in ways that would allow them to also do their best in service to nation. But when you have a situation where you have a government uh, that looks at its uh, history or precursors and the claim is made that uh, you know, they are the bastions of democracy, the proponents of uh, rule of law, promoters of freedom of speech. And as I said earlier, you have the current president, uh, whose, uh, you know, rise to glory also includes the fact that uh, he is deemed to have led the effort to repeal the crim criminal libel law. So pretending over what we are seeing today, then he gives room for worry. And he knows that we have slided. If we are even to look at the global figures, where we stood, and as far as the global media uh, freedom index is concerned, mm. we have dropped by about four points or so. On the continent that, you know, we dominated for a number of years, uh, today we are no longer number one. Why is that? And it is very simple. First of all, let's take a few examples of present and current issues to do with the vindictive Repressal attitude by government officials and government, pro government apparatchiks towards journalists for doing their work. The most recent one is Edward Adita of Star FM. What is his crime? He did his work. He uncovered some work that was being done in my region of Upper East by a Chinese company, whereupon he was going to expose that. Uh, from the tapes that have come to the public domain, a minister of state at the office of the president, a former regional minister of mine from the Upper East region, tried to negotiate an arrangement, a bribe, for the journalist to drop the story. It didn't happen. The issue came to the public domain. The minister was pushed, contrary to what we heard, that uh, he had resigned. From what we hear, he didn't resign. Well, the, the first forward, that he has to resign. First, well, we know that he didn't resign. We know. So we, we know. He was pushed. So is that close? He was pushed. He okay. was pushed to, okay. to leave. He you was sacked. He, he didn't resign, but he was Yeah, we believe that he okay. was sacked. All right. So, so what you believe, sir? Well, that is my belief. So I'm entitled to it. But the fact is... If I believe something, if I say this is black, you can't tell me it is red. Even, not, even, you even are not in my spectacles. Even when everybody okay. sees You are not in my <laughs> spectacles. Okay. That is my belief. But the point I'm making is that... Then he, 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 we begin hearing that he's being threatened. Um, a day or so ago, his residence was attacked and ransacked. And I know, being from the region, that indeed 
those tax who went there went after the journalist. He had the hint the night before and therefore relocated. Now, let's look at the issue of Manasseh Azue, who we now know has actually been flown out of the country for fear of his life. What did Manasseh do? He conducted an investigative piece which severely indicted government mm. and even raised and presented a direct linkage between the president of the country and the militia group training at the former seat of government, now known as Castle. When that piece came up, government resisted, a statement was issued, the media house that he worked for was asked to apologize, the group DI decided to go to court, and as we speak now, his life is so threatened that he is now in a hideout. And can we even forget the situation where a man who is seen to be very close to the president, many see him as the president's spiritual father, his prophet, on two occasions, himself has gone to studios to attack journalists, and yet has walked free. On the other hand, a journalist who actually indicated that he had seen a vision telling him that this man said that today is in hiding could be endangered for the expose that he did and presented to us was actually wheeled in using the state security apparatus by a government that believes that we should applaud it for doing the best to promote journalism. And have you forgotten what Ajia Fati, everybody knows her, who doesn't know that, you know, she is a very close associate of uh, the, the president, and that she's a strong, recognized activist of the MPP. She assaulted a journalist. Major Derek Odro, member of parliament, deputy minister for defense, ordered two of his guys to assault a journalist. I can cite not less than 10 instances under this Akufuado or Safumafu Babamiya regime where journalists have been abused, assaulted, and attacked. So when he wants to draw in what happened in the past, yes, we recognize that, you know, of course, there can be misconduct here and there, but boot for boot, one on one, everyone who has followed the trajectory since the MPP took over the reins of the governance of this country, would come to the conclusion that this government is most intolerant. Any and everything that the government believes is going to dent its reputation, regardless of where it comes from, even from its own traditional allies, they will come after you. And that is why today, Ghana cannot boast. We can't hold our heads high in as far as media freedom is concerned. But as the former president right. and my boss, and my presidential candidate, President John Damani Mama, the incoming president of Ghana, said the journalists need to soldier on to perform their responsibilities, and the state has a responsibility to protect them. The state and those who are being paid by the resources of the state, the taxpayers' money, clearly should not be using that resource to finance and promote the abuse and vindictive attitude that we are seeing being perpetrated, both overtly and covertly, against journalists. They are also Ghanaian citizens. They have a role to play, and we have a collective responsibility to tolerate them, no matter how unpalatable their work may seem to us. And that is why we, the minority, we are resolved to continue to do our best we in the NDC will continue to do our best to support the work of journalists, even okay. in these very dire conditions in right. which they find themselves. Uh, I'm right. Right. Let me go to a uh, right. uh, part. So the, the, the key thing is that uh, even though, like you said, we, we, we come from a point, we, we're beginning to see the, the slide. But you had earlier enumerated what government is doing to fix the problem. Now, 
Are, are these seeing results? Well, Brad, uh, thank you very much. The safety of journalists, mm -hmm. particularly, and the safety of everybody in this country is a shared responsibility. And the, the role that the state has to play, the state continues to play. And I tried to differentiate to you before that under the NDC, we had attacks by sponsored by the state, state actors. But we're still first. Let me finish. As as yeah, that's not correct. That's not correct. We were first a year ago. The state, that, the state, the state uh, attacked. Uh, yeah, yeah, we yes, directed yeah, the state yeah, to yes, attack journalists. I, I'm telling you, state operators. No, and no, I, no, I no, gave no, no, the, in, in the case said, where the police no, attacked may, the journalists, is, may, is, is that the state? Is, is, is that the government? If I may. So that's, it, it is never correct what uh, uh, Dr. Apak said, and it cannot be correct that we were still the same. No, we were not. Under this dispensation, what was our well, under this dispensation last year, mm. we became the first. So we became the first last year, yes. 2018. Yes. Okay. So what has changed? And, 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 and regrettably, Wh so it cannot, it cannot be true mm. that under the NDC, uh, and he says for a long time, that is never correct. And number two, Mr. Mr. Park says he knows how the system works because he used to work in the Jubilee House. The way the system... I worked in the Flagstaff House, not the Jubilee House. Not the Flagstaff House. Mm. Well, I, I that's used to you call work. it that. Yes, no problem. But how the system worked under the NDC is definitely not how the system works under the MPP. It's different. So under the NDC, if you're supposed to see red and call it black, because that is your belief, and you have to say it is black, even though, admittedly, it is red, if you don't say it is black, you'll be called to the Flagstaff House or Jubilee House, uh, as we, we rightly so want to call it. That is a pedestrian oh, point. No, Make I your main no, point no, and no, let's no, go. No, I was, no, from I was indicating my own personal opinion. Uh, uh, the abundance of the heart. Uh, uh, deal with the issue. Deal with it. I was here when you spoke. Was a journalist killed under our auspices? Several. Several journalists were killed. Really? Yes. And I can give you a Can we stay on this topic? No. If in 2018, allow me to respond. I listened to. And in 2019, we have slept. Is it not worrying? No, I'm saying that at least I had to respond to some of the deliberate misinformation that has been put out. <laughs> and I was here and I kept going and I listened throughout. You understand? We can go on with a long list of attacks that was perpetrated under the NDC by leading members of the NDC. Mm. Mr. Stand like who? Mr. Standogbe, for instance, who assaulted and broke a journalist camera was not just a party apparatchiki like you, you try to name a party apparatchiki. He was at the game of affairs at the, the, the so-called then Flagstaff House. Mm. The personal bodyguard of uh, the, the, the former president just recently assaulted and, and broke the eye of a, a Joy FM uh, uh, reporter. As we speak now, the gentleman continues to work with the NDC. So even in opposition, you cannot show leadership. On so, these matters, so, so to argue, to you, argue, you took over I will, I will and deal then with those. Seen, I will deal right. with those matters. Mm. So to argue that journalists in this country can and will feel safer under an NDC is for me the the, the, the most unsubstantiated statement that can, it is not supported by any fact. Right. Do you and the journalists themselves, the and the, and the the journalists themselves Pius, know it. Pius, do you think journalists are safe today? Look, I can assure you. Mm that the journalists in this country do recognize that the system today is more conducive to really? their work. Okay. And you so speak about somebody else. That's look, what you're saying. Look, I'm, I'm, are you look, being honest? No, no, please. Did you no, go to no, church no, yesterday? No, no, you, no, you, are, you are missing the point. Lying, if you're lying, you're missing the point. You are missing the point. You are missing the point. I think your question is, are journalists safe today? Well, I'm saying that safety is not a constant concept. Every day we have to work at it. Mm. People are, I mean, attitudes and characters are changing. And the states and government has a responsibility to respond. Government is trying its best. We are doing what we have to do to ensure the safety of journalists. And that is why we have even started a national coordinating mechanism on the safety of journalists. So you cannot say whether and journalists so, today so, are safe so, or not. That is what you cannot no, say. Why not? You are, you are here doing your work. You are a journalist. Are you safe? I am not safe. What, what is wrong with your safety? Well, I, I, our colleagues are being killed. No, I'm so asking. No, please. Let's not. Let's look. On a daily basis, mm. crime still happens across the world. 
and in Ghana included. And some of the casualties and victims of those crimes are journalists. Right. But to make a general statement that journalists feel unsafe means that you suspect or you see a, a scheme, a, an agenda to attack would journalists. You, would you say some journalists are unsafe? But I'm saying, I'm, I, I, look, I have reviewed literature about attacks on journalists for the last five years, in, and it is alarming. It is no different from what we see today. What is different, in my view, is the government response. Why? We didn't have a national coordinating mechanism in the, on the safety of journalists in the past. Mm. But today we have. What we had before, what the NDC attempted to do was to take some one million CDs, which they shared to a few journalists, and some argued that they bought laptops and, and, and so on and so forth. Today, we are institutionalizing a proper capacity enhancement program. Today, we have passed, and then the NDC, several governments came and go, we are able to pass the RTI. Under the, the current president, when he was attorney general, mm. we, we repealed the criminal libel. And so, our commitment to ensuring the safety and, and securing the environment under which journalists work is manifest. It's not, it's not just by okay. word of mouth. It's clearly manifest. Great. Right. Now, to pick on one or two unfortunate crimes committed in which uh, uh, journalists are, are victims, to therefore indicate that uh, journalists feel less safe today than they felt some time past, for me, it's, 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 not, it's wrong. Pius, in the case it, it's, of, it's in wrong. The, and he talks of, about the Adeti. Uh, in the case of Ahmed Swali, there were processes. It is not a one incident. There were processes. His picture was shown, and then he, some threat, yeah, and but then you he see, was killed. So don't, don't, it's don't, not right. it is, it is No, no, no. It, it is it simplistic. It just happen. There were no, processes. I'm saying that it is simplistic. It's simplistic to, to connect the dots in that manner. You be. We couldn't you, have you, stopped you, no, it from I'm happening. I'm saying that you will be. You will be. You will be. What you seek to just do right now mm. is to connect showing of pictures and the unfortunate incidents. I think that these are matters that we should allow the police to make a determination on. Okay. It may stand to reason. It may stand to reason, but at our level as journalists, people who have the mic and the world is watching us, we must be guided how we conclude and, 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 and connect the dots. Otherwise, we would get ahead of the police and even create a misleading impression. My brother speaks about Adeti. Mm. We have a government that takes action when the, the journalists do their job. And that is most satisfying to most journalists. Under the NDC, when such similar incidences occurred, government did not bother to even take any action. And that actually is very unsatisfying to a lot of the journalists. In this case, at least action was taken. The gentleman realized that what he did, uh, uh, in his own words, did not conform to the to the 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 the, 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 the persona and the quality of leadership that the president exhumes. And so he decides to resign. We hear later on that they have been attacks. On his house, we have condemned those, but we are so, yet to so establish process, who are those. The process is there. We are yet to he, establish he, he who makes are those. The man how resigns. are we sure that is the state not mandated to protect sure? this person? Yes, I'm saying that. And now his house is back. No, I'm, I'm saying that the state. So that's the worry. The, but 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 so you're, you're process, suggesting it's not, it's not no, but one, it's, one, one it, it is not the case that when a journalist publishes a story. And the, the next state morning resigns. Then the next is morning. The state, then the next can morning. Can the state protect that But I'm saying to you that. I'm saying to you that the state has to follow a process. And I, I, I have had cause to speak to this matter. Okay. In the first place, the gentleman has, has to go to the police and make a, a formal complaint. And the police has to make an assessment of his okay. security. Let me get Dr. Pak to wrap and, 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 and prefer the necessary. But how are we even sure <laughs> that these people who uh, uh, yeah, 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 attack Mr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pak, please wrap up. In Mr. Pak's uh, uh, region, uh, uh, how are we sure? How are we sure, Mr. Pak? Please wrap up and let's go. We don't even know anything about it. How are we sure? Right. How are we sure that he didn't know anything it is, about it? It is obvious that uh, Pius and I would not agree. And, and that is, it is normal because uh, he, he has a government to defend and I have a government to expose for his shortcomings. But you see, is, is it not very interesting that uh, with regards to the three topical issues to do with journalists' lives being threatened that we can point to today, two of them 
have to do with investigations that go to the heart of the presidency. I speak about the number 12 expose. I even must add the issue of the Galamsey fraud too. And indeed, the one uh, to do with uh, the, the militia. What does that tell you? And as you said earlier, you see, we what can try. In that militia? What we, is that? We, what, can, what is we, can, we can try to militia dismiss. Militia. We, yeah, the, the Manasseh, 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 the Journalists Most of very, very the pointers serious. are going to the government of the day. But you are here with a the journalist. They Those are the under safe. attack. You are here and with the journalist. And that is a fact. Regardless okay. of whatever program government may put in place, in as long as journalists are continually being attacked and vilified, maligned and insulted because of their work and because it is likely to indict the sitting government and the sitting president, Journalists can never feel safe in I'm this. I'm grateful. Time. He's a member of parliament for the Bursa South constituency. He's a member of the NDC, Dr. Clementa Park. Yeah, 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 grateful yeah, yeah. for your time with us. And uh, Paris Enam Hajide is uh, Deputy Minister of Information. Grateful for your Monday morning. Stay here. There is more coming up.